Well, thank you all for joining us for Talks at Google. We are very delighted and honored to have Amber Lewis of Amber Interior Designs here with us. She is an interior designer based out of California and has been featured in, honestly, probably any home and garden magazine or TV show that you can think of. She's been in HGTV, Domino, House Beautiful, the list goes on and on. And she's basically built a loyal follower <laughs> count um, by building basically an empire and a massive brand. So I don't want to spoil too much. So I'll go ahead and just kick it over to you. And why don't you just give us a little bit of a background and tell us kind of how you got started in interior design. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. They're very Hi. cute faces there. Hi. Hi. Um, I got started, so I always had a real interest in art of some kind. I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I grew up. If that's yeah. <laughs> no, does anybody? I mean, like, I think I wanted to be a vet, and I think I wanted to be whatever. But always in my whole life, my dad was a contractor, so I used to live in a house that was always under construction of some type, and I loved it. And I remember feeling like the first thing that I was obsessed with was like paint and color and having these like guttural responses to how I felt about my surroundings. And I still do. My husband can attest. He's like, honey, the light is fine. It's, it's all good. Just, you're you're going to survive. Um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I, I kind of floundered through school. I don't even know how I graduated, if I'm honest. I was just like not a great student. I was way more interested in being social and having friends and I thought like you you know I want to be an artist but how do I make a career of that so I just applied to a fashion school because in LA that was sort of you know okay well that's the next step I'm gonna just go to fashion school and I went to fashion school hated it I dropped out in probably eight weeks after I had paid for six months which is really like the full semester which was horrible my dad basically wanted to murder me um, and then <laughs> it's okay dad I landed on my feet but anyway and then I um, hated it left and went to go work for like a home design store and it was there that I really realized, like, wow, I really like interior design, whatever that was. I was actually just doing displays. So I wasn't even doing any interior design yet because that's such a different thing. Um, but I was just doing, like, the beds and doing the shelves, and I loved it. And so I found out that, you, that there was a um, program at the UCLA Extension uh, campus at UCLA. And so I enrolled in that, and I just thought that was where I like really realized, okay, well, you can get paid to do this, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it. And that's kind of how I got really into interior design. So you were that kid that was like rearranging their room when oh, they were little, 25 like 20 times a yeah. week. Yeah. And your parents were like really, really yeah. younger? Yeah, I am actually writing a book, and in one of the, the beginning chapters, I talk about how I had to have my room pink. And which is like, of course, like it's so yeah. stereotypical, but it had to be the right pink. Right. And to this day, I'm still that psycho that it has to be the right thing. It has to be like this perfect thing. And I think that was just a personality trait that I curated and figured out how to use it to my advantage. But I was like, it's, it's birth pretty much. Yeah, I got it. I had a green room, so I can oh, relate. God. But like very, it wasn't, don't freak out everyone. It was not like grass green. It was like mint green. So oh, I can relate. You know, okay. there are different different all greens are good greens in my book yeah it's a neutral <laughs> it is. so did you know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur kind of coming out of school or did you oh. <laughs> okay uh, so let me no. just rewind to okay. it I cute I went to UCLA I also dropped out of that right I, I got, <laughs> sorry <laughs> everyone should stay in school Gwenny stay in school um, I just got a great job for an interior design company and I was making really good money and not having, like what I was learning at school didn't feel like it was serving me to be able to do something on my own. I was really just learning how to work for somebody else, which was amazing, but I was you know, cocky enough to think that I could do it on my own. Right. So I was like, Ugh, I don't even need school. Plus I was getting married and all these other things were going on in my life. So I uh, was working for this interior designer for a couple years and it was great and I loved it and I was making really good money. And then one day she sat me down. This is like my husband and I had bought a house. I'll kind of go back to that. But we had bought a house and I started a blog. And she's like invited me to sit down to coffee. And it, I knew. It was just like oh this God. gut feeling. And she basically sat me down and fired me in the nicest way possible and said, you just need to go on your own. I was like, go on my own? What do you mean go on my own? I don't even know how to like, how do I write an invoice? How do yeah. I, I don't know what I'm doing. And 
I just went on my own. And that was like the beginning of the, the whole thing. So that was in 2000 and end of 2010. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't have any big goals to be an entrepreneur. All of this has happened. It just happened to you. Yeah. I mean, you were presented with like opportunities or obstacles and you were like, well, I got to figure this out. And yeah. so you just kind of took those steps, whatever it was. Yeah. And I'm yeah. definitely a go-getter. I definitely yeah. don't just sit back and wait for things to happen to me. I make every, there's, it's not calculated, but it's very obsessive. So once I decided that I was going to do this. I did it with not just like 1% of my body. It became 140% of my body. And it was just everything in me to put it all in there and really make something of myself. Basically. Yeah. Oh, show so your dad. Yeah. <laughs> dad, check me out. <laughs> no, I didn't really have any big goals, but I just knew I was going to do whatever it was that I was going to do. Yeah. And do it well. So did you, what was that initial first step? What did those look like? Did you create yeah. like a business plan or when your boss is like, sorry, you got to go. And you're like, okay, it's fine. I'll be fine. What did, what did you do? What's a business plan? I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I, I I don't, don't. know. <laughs> I work at Google. I didn't start Everyone's this. Everyone's like, did you do that? I'm like, no, there was no calculation. It was a shit show. At, oh, uh, sorry. No, you can say that. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, no, you're fine. Sorry. You're fine. Don't Hi, worry. nice to meet you all. Uh, it was crazy at first. Um, I didn't have a business plan. I had nothing. I just had drive. And so I had a baby too, which was really interesting. And I was with her all day when she would go to sleep. And I would stay up all night teaching myself WordPress and teaching myself Photoshop and teaching myself like obsessively looking on Pinterest yeah. and looking at other bloggers. And when I started the blog, and that's basically how it all kind of came about was that was we bought blog. this house, started a blog, started oh. writing DIY things, started choose, you know, talking about paint colors and I DIY like a cork board and I, Mike and I built a shelf. Like it was just silly things like that. And it started to get some traction. And when <laughs> we, it was out of nowhere that I just would get clients or random people just saying like, hey, will you come help me do this and yes. that and the other? And I would, and I was saying yes a lot and just uh, realized like, oh, okay, well, this will kind of turn into whatever it turns into, no pressure. Yeah. And then. And here we are. And here we are, sitting at Googs. At the Googs. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's it. Well, that's really amazing. And it's also really interesting to see how it was so organic. I think, so I kind of want to touch a little bit on you being a female entrepreneur. Yeah. Even if you maybe don't necessarily like identify as an entrepreneur, it sounds like you were just like, I did what I had to do. Um, well, now, I, I now you're like, I got this. No, well, now I'm like, okay, well, you I 100% identify as an entrepreneur. I mean, what's happened to me now versus what happened to me, yeah. you know, 10, whatever, seven years ago. I don't even, I had no plan, but now, I mean, we'll get to that, but now yeah. I'm like, I'm doing so many things. I yeah. I would say like, I think I, you can probably label me as that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. So <laughs> do you think, I feel a lot of times though, as though women, especially a lot of times we'll attribute our success in life to luck or opportunities. Mm. So what do you think are all of that aside, yes, luck and opportunity definitely matters. Do you think that are the key strengths that you have that yeah. attributed to the success that you have right now? Um, I never quit. Never, ever, ever quit. Still to this day, I'm not happy with where I am. I always think I could be doing 10 times better, be 10 steps ahead. I think the minute you settle is the minute you start to get too comfortable and right. that's when failure happens in my mind. I. 100% wake up and love what I do. I love it every second. I mean, I get tired. I whine a right. lot. It hurts physically sometimes when you're on an install and you're doing all these things and you're exhausted or you're on a plane and then you're this and you're talking for hours a day. That gets exhausting, but I don't com I don't really whine about it because it's everything I've ever wanted. So being in a position to literally live out your dream yeah. is something that I'm never going to be I'm never going to take for granted. So I tr just try to keep that in my head a little bit. And it's really, we built such an amazing business that now I can support my family. I have a little, you know, we have an amazing group of women and men that work for us, more women than men, but uh, that we support. And it, it's just kind of, I don't know. I never thought that, again, like back to your question about being an entrepreneur, I never in a million years thought that that was going to be what or who I am. But I think that that insane drive, that never being happy with 
mediocre, never being happy with just where I am. It's what it's caused us to do. <laughs> I mean, furniture lines, stores, e-commerce. There's like the Instagram presence. We're licensing deals. We're, I don't know, what else am I forgetting? I feel like there's a Your book. book. Oh yeah, that little thing. <laughs> you know, it's it, all these crazy, and I'm a mother and a wife. Yeah. I'm trying to, you know, be at home, so. Do you think that there will ever be a point where you'll I feel like I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> where you'll look no. back and, yeah, <laughs> you know. No, finish. So finish. you're never going to be like, dang, I made it. Like, I'm at the top no. of this mountain. No. No. It's always the next thing, right? Yeah, 100%. And I like that that lights the fire under my ass. I don't ever right. want to be comfortable. Comfortable is scary to me. So you kind of, like, crave that. Oh, totally. Almost like the, I don't want to say misery, but, like, that yeah. pressure. Oh, totally sadistic. Same. Like, it, yeah, it's, it's weird, sick. right? Yeah, yeah. I think a, sure. a lot of us at Google definitely feel that way as <laughs> yeah. well. So, like, I can, yeah. I'll, I can I'll hear, like, someone going, oh, I worked a 10-hour day. I'm like, that's it? That's, that's <laughs> you can do more. Get yeah, in there. Get, get out yeah. of the field, Johnny. Okay. Good. I didn't sleep. I win. Yeah. <laughs> I've been up for 22 hours, whatever. No, I, I don't think I'll ever settle. Yeah. I, 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 but what's the point? Why would I? Yeah. There's always more to you do, gotta right? got to strike while the iron's hot. I may be completely irrelevant in a minute and a half, so I might as well just keep Dang. going. Yeah. It's true, I guess. I guess. Dang. So washed up, the, the, uh, you know, designer. So what's dad going to say? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to disown me. It's okay. Yeah. I think he's got it. He's good. <laughs> so what do you think, have there been any challenges or obstacles aside from just, you know, that tiredness and exhaustion that you think that you've faced maybe that are uniquely or unique to you as a female entrepreneur yeah. or just that in general? Yeah. There's always that silly question, work-life balance. Like how, yeah. Because as women, we're expected to raise our kids. We're expected to take care of home. I have an amazing supportive partner and a very understanding, awesome kid. And she you know, I work for them. Yeah. And there was definitely moments in my career and still every single day where I'm juggling, wow, I'm missing this softball game and this basketball game because I'm doing something else. And that is really tough because those are moments I can't get back. But ultimately, there is no other way. And so right. I've just had to really, as a woman, accept that we're in different roles. It's a role reversal in a sense. Like my husband's able to do a lot more things with our daughter than I am, which is really tough. But you know, this is the life that we kind of ended up in, you know, signed up for. And I wouldn't really have it any other way. And those are the, that's the toughest part is just the missing out. Yeah. The, fo the FOMO. Yeah. Oh, it's real. <laughs> it's, it's real. real. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Do you I have JOMO too now, though. What, what, the joy what? of missing out is also oh, my like, favorite like, thing oh, in the world. Oh, you're partying and I'm in bed so uh, comfortable right nine now with my sleeping. Snuggie. Yeah, Woo! 100%. Like watching yeah. that. Or I don't care if you were sitting Google next play. to Brad Pitt, I want to, I slept. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't dream about him and it was great. Fine. Yeah, you're fine. Do you think that, um, is there, I guess, any certain piece of advice that somebody gave to you that kind of got you through some of these hardships or what's the one piece of advice that you find yourself often repeating to yeah. others and are those two things the same? Yeah. I, I feel like anyone who follows me, I feel like a broken record, but it is the one thing in my whole career that has stuck with me forever, which is never judge your start to someone's middle. Oh. Every single day, I feel like I'll get approached by other entrepreneurs and, you know, they think I'm this overnight thing, uh, overnight yeah. success. I have busted my ass for years, for years to get here. and. It's not, it didn't happen on accident. I've worked so hard to get to where we are today. And it's tough to be on the other side of that, someone who's looking at my career and going like, oh, I'm never gonna get there, or I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do that. And honestly, I'm looking at other people and thinking the same thing. So right. the biggest piece of advice I've ever been given is just don't start, I don't even know if I was given it or I read it or whatever. Um, but it's just don't judge or start to someone else's middle. And I think also just to not, you know, comparison period is, is really tough. And just like always kind of gauging your success by what others are doing. Mm -hmm. um, just stay in your own lane and stay focused on what you're doing. And that seems to be a good motto. Yeah. yeah. What's kind of your focus right now? So what's, what drives you every day, morning? I mean, I know you touched on um, definitely the taking care of your family yeah. and you just love this work, but is there ever just something, some focus area that you are, you just get fixated on? 
Um, I think I just want to, one of the biggest things that I don't want to lose is the creativity in all of it. Um, so I try to focus on ways to basically balance all the other things that we're doing, but still have this love and have this uh, focus on the creation. Because that is ultimately what got me into this, right? I still love to do design. And, you know, I say this all the time, like nobody believes me, but I literally am on every install putting things together, lifting furniture. I threw my back out the other day. You know, vacuuming, windexing. Like, I'm doing all of those things still because that's where I've started and that's where, yeah. I, I, like, if I lose that, then I'm really losing a big piece of kind of what makes me tick. Yeah. So as we start to spread the business into so many other facets, um, not losing the, the, be, like, the ability to be able to create is a really, really big one for me. I think it's really interesting that you touch on that because that's something I think a lot of creative people experience is yeah. they have such an innate passion for whatever it is that they're doing that they are so focused on making that their career yeah. that once you turn that creative process into a financial means, you lose a lot of that passion Absolutely. and drive. So what, what tactics do you employ like when you're burned out or is it just like just so I'm a pretty there. ritualistic person. Oh, really? um, I wake up every single morning before my family gets up and spend a solid, like hopefully I try to get at least like 40 minutes of just being by myself in the dark with a cup of coffee. Like that is, that's, call it meditation or whatever, if you will. I don't really have, ex I don't exercise. I don't do a lot of stuff. That's just not part of my schedule at the moment. It's okay. <laughs> it's a little crazy. I mean, I like, why you think I'm running a marathon yeah, right now? No. I'm sitting in the chair. Anyway, anyway. it's all good. Um, but no, I get up and I try to just have quiet time for like the first half hour to 40 minutes of my life because I know that's the only way I can gather my thoughts because it's like, go, 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 go all day. And then you're home and then it's like, go, 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 go. And then I just want to sit in front of the television and zone out. And then same deal, you know, mornings is just quiet my own time. So what does your day look like then? Because yeah. now I know your morning. So what happens after that 40 minutes? Oh my God. I don't know. Okay, yeah. you don't have to relive it. Like, no, I'm no, going to no. take you to a bad place. We don't have to go there. It's not that bad. Okay. Um, if I can, which is my favorite thing, is to be able to go to the office. I don't really get to go as much as I used to. I, I mean, maybe I'm just feeling like that lately because I haven't been there in two and a half weeks and that's horrible. I hate it. Yeah. Um, but I like to go to the office. I like to check in with the team. Our daughter goes to school, she does her thing, and then it's just kind of like work, work, work. And then I try to get home like 6.30, 7. Um, and that's, the days are just filled with either meetings, phone calls, a lot of checking in. Like we have separate teams that are doing projects. They're like managing however many, so I try to touch base with both at any given time throughout the day. And anything that kind of relates to other parts of the business, because I said like we have the stores and licensing and. God only knows what else. It's a lot of phone calls and meetings yeah. and talking. That's, yeah. That's what I do all day long. I talk. Yeah. Talk. Cool. Yeah. Good I place couldn't tell. To be, yeah, I guess. So, how does that differ from how um, it was when you started? Were you, are you well, working I was alone. more? <laughs> I was alone on my dining table. That was the big difference. Now we have a huge, amazing team. Yeah. Um, I started actually just basically completely on my own, which was so isolating. And, but it was okay. Could you figure great. it out as and you go? I figured it out. And then I hired like one employee and they sat with me at the dining table and then eventually I got a big girl office and wow. yeah. And it's always been, we've made these really crazy pivotal moves just on a whim, always. Like I found an office, went to Whole Foods, was like, I'm gonna get an office today. <sighs> found one, signed a lease the next day. Like that's- uh, it's Whole been, Food? Wait, what happened to Whole Foods? There was a, sorry, there was a Whole Foods about like around this little oh, okay. area that we first got our first office. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna drive by there really quick oh. and see, and there was this little frilly sign and well, I called and we got it. And then I was in an office all of a sudden. So we had an office and I had to fill that. And that's sort of what I did. We started kind of taking on more projects and it was like all this really cool luck of the draw. And then when we started our store, which was another total fluke. Right. I had no intention of starting a store. We had an online e-commerce business and we were fine with that. My husband actually came and we started working together, which was amazing. And he still to this day runs the whole store. Um, and then we, same deal. Like I had had an idea of this amazing little store kind of down the street from our house that someone else was occupying. And I kept thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. We were skiing 
And I remember just thinking, like, I just want to drive by that place and see. And sure enough, lo and behold, they had just put a little for lease and they wanted to sublease the space. And so that's how we ended up getting our first retail location was, again, wow. totally on a whim. Like, no big picture, no big plan. It would be cool to have. And then you're in this, the struggle of, oh, crap, how are we going to pay for this? Yeah. And I've never borrowed money. That's awesome. Yeah. We've never, I mean, I say that we borrowed money from my mom to like buy a house and stuff like yeah. that. We paid her back. Um, but no, like we've never borrowed a dime to That's do amazing. anything business wise. And still to this day, we haven't. That's we awesome. Strap the whole thing. So yeah. it's interesting that you mentioned that you don't have a plan really, but it does sound like you definitely have a vision. Like you're a very oh, visual yeah. person. So yeah. how does that kind of play into your style? Because I do want to acknowledge we're all after your, <laughs> your thought and creative process. So um, how does that play out? Do you picture the house and what it could look like yeah. when you walk through it? Or what does that, pro that creative process look like for you? I get asked this question so much. And I wish that there was just a straightforward, this is the answer. I've, like I said, everything I do is very guttural. I yeah. have a real innate sense for mixing patterns and styles and I don't know when I know I know I don't really know if that's a teachable thing but there's it's I can break it into a formula I think mm -hmm. um, usually I'll go into a space I try to vibe off what the client wants a little bit sort of take on board what they're saying typically try to convince them to do something different <laughs> not do what I say yeah um, and then we sort of just build the design from there I it, every house is completely different. If you are familiar with a portfolio, like hopefully you would think that no two oh, houses. I can look name the those same. hashtags like <laughs> nobody's business. Good. All right, I good. think Fine. you're the follower of them, and then I'm the follower of them. <laughs> good. So I got you. Amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's no method to the madness. I think it's just all guttural and all a feeling, and just over the years of really learning what my style is and being able to hone in on it. I mean, where we, we were like even seven years ago was totally different than now. Yeah. yeah. And I also think it is amazing because you can really look at a photo of your work and everybody knows either who it is or who tried to, who they tried to copy. Right. <laughs> so it's very much your trademark. Yeah. And so I think that that's really unique because there are so many times where you might have an idea, especially for creative people, you have an idea in your head, but you don't know what that looks like to execute. Yeah. Um, you know what you want, but sometimes you do it and you're like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So it's amazing that you can really achieve that result um, as well. Do you, um, I was going to ask, so you have definitely an aesthetic yeah. and I think Instagram has probably uh, helped kind of refine yeah, that or totally. made it very, um, digestible for a lot of your followers yeah how did you grow that brand presence so what is what do you think your brand is this is where it gets to the I think a little bit of luck and timing I mean I think because you can't really you can be the hardest working Instagrammer mm -hmm. ever and have you know four followers and they're your parents like there's nothing <laughs> I don't know how you really sometimes I'm like, I'm like oh that hurt that would hurt me a little but yeah I can relate I'm like, I'm you I don't even like, know okay, yeah. mom I'm yeah. Instagram live. Yeah. I, I think it was I was in a really I was right at the beginning of when it started to become a thing and because I was documenting all the aspects of the interior design, but also I was like, you know, this was back in the day when you were still, it was acceptable to take pictures of your food. And your feet. <laughs> and your feet on Why rugs. not? And that was my jam. That was what I did. I used to basically like take pictures of my cute boots on cute rugs. Mm -hmm. And so then people would go, where'd you get that rug? And I'd be like, well, you want it? And then <laughs> I'll sell uh, it to you. Yeah. And that's literally okay, so that. some of it was hustle too. Yeah, it, I mean, it kind of became that because I don't get emotionally attached to objects. Believe it or not, I'm a hoarder, but I don't. I could let it go just as well. Do you just want it all? I, I've learned to let it go. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I like to collect and collect and then like know that they're there. And then if I forget about it, then you can really definitely get it from underneath me. But um, I, yeah, I like to shop. I like to get stuff. I really love things. Like things make me. Yeah. I, this sounds awful. Things no, but I'm happy. sad because I can so relate. Yeah. And even just now when you were saying like, oh, yeah, and if I forget about it, it's like me when I go shopping yeah. every single time. I'm like, well, if I forgot about it within 15 minutes, then I don't really need it. Right. Or so, your stuff still has like tags on it. 17 yeah. black shirts. I've got those. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, me, I don't know. There was, my aesthetic just kind of evolved. It, it just is what it is. It's like I put out there what I like. Um, I don't really even know what I'm heavily influenced by. I feel like I'm just influenced to do better than whatever we did last time. Do you
Do you think that your style is changing or evolving in any way? Every single day. Okay. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think as I grow up, you know, like I've kind of grown up with whoever's been following for years, uh, which is a lot, like a lot, a lot can change in a seven, 10 year, you know, span. Yeah. So as I grow up, my style sort of changes, whether or not it becomes more refined, more funky, whatever I'm feeling with that client specifically, it, it changes for sure. So what do you think is kind of your favorite part of your job or of the design process? Is it styling? Is it the actual build? What is yeah, it? Yeah, I love to build. I okay. really do. I like to be able to determine, I don't love the stress that comes with it. I think if you have an amazing team it, and like everybody has their you know, part in it, then it can be an incredible production and you can get the best results. And so it kind of, I like to build with the right people, I guess is the right thing to say, but being able to choose the details is so awesome. Being able to choose like how the tile is gonna lay and what that's gonna look like, because I believe that with the stuff in it, the house also needs to look as beautiful without the stuff in it. Um, and not the only way to do that is sometimes by the builds. I, a heavy remodel also works. And I say heavy remodel, it's like taking it down to the studs. <laughs> Literally gutting the whole thing, yeah. Um, but that's my favorite part still. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite part. So that's interesting too that you just kind of outlined one of your design principles of um, it should, the house should look beautiful yeah. with or without what, whatever's in it. Yeah. Do you have any other ones that you kind of carry with you like beliefs or just principles of uh that you apply almost to every house yeah. that you do as i've grown sort of you know i i like to think like you get recognized for a style and by the time you start to get recognized for that style you hope that you've been that that style has been forgotten and now they're yeah. recognizing you for they're... something else and it's not that it's completely crazy like it's one thing you know one day i'm painting things orange and the next day i'm painting everything white it's always been pretty consistent there's like consistent elements throughout my whole body of work um but yeah i i think traditional beautiful classic design is really i mean you can't go wrong. So if you choose elements that feel like they've been around for a really long time and don't do things that are trendy or in the know, you know, people always say, is, I'll specifically talk about brass because that seems to be like one of these hot topics. Yeah. If you've ever traveled in Europe or if you've ever traveled anywhere outside of the US, we've only now just adopted that. Like that is everywhere else, marble and brass. And you go to Italy and it's marble and brass. And it's sort of one of those things, if you treat it like that and you're treating it more as a element that isn't trendy mm -hmm. and you mix it with the other right things, then I think you know it can become classic and not just, just stay away from trendy stuff. I don't yeah. know. So you definitely take more of a global perspective and keep, yeah. keep that in 100%. mind as well. Yeah, we, I mean, we import you know, furniture from all over the world too and tile from all over the place. And, yeah. yeah. Fun stuff. How do you narrow down? I just feel like that would be so overwhelming <laughs> to make all those decisions. And I'm sure you it have is. so many people contacting you asking you to use their tile. Yeah. So how do you kind of navigate that? How do you say no, I think is a, another question kind of within that? Well, there was a two part there. So yeah. it's really hard to narrow down. We're actually building our house right now. Like I your am, personal yes. home? We're wow. building our own personal house right now. I am the worst client. I am the worst client. I can't make up my mind. I change every day. I don't know what I want because I also don't have my clients' funds. Yeah, so <laughs> that's true. I have to kind of like reel it in and ask for favors a lot. Um, be like, you know, that one time when I tagged you, can you guys have me up? So there's like a little bit of bartering and trading going on. Uh, so that's one part of your question. The second one was, how do I say no? Yeah. Um, that's really tough because the so like the social gal in me wants to just answer and say yes, but then the professional in me realizes that that's something that I get paid to do is to right. pick these things for a paying client. So I have to be very very careful with what I share because I can get in a lot of trouble. I mean, my clients could be so mad at me that I told every secret because what's the point? Yeah. Um, so I've just learned to respect that. I'm, it's intellectual property in a way. I want to share, and that's why we have started another blog, and just to like really put everything I can out there into the world. And this is why I'm writing the book. Anything that I can share, I want to share. Um, but it's like when it's specific, specific things, 
I yeah. gotta say, no. And it's just out of respect for, you know, longevity. <laughs> yeah. And relationship with my client is a really big deal for me. How do you balance that degree of visibility that you have yeah. on social media? And you have people who are asking you paint colors and where you got this piece of furniture and all of yeah. these details. And it sounds like you are kind of releasing the book and you've launched yeah. the blog, but how do you... How do you kind of handle I mean, I those? I don't think I have a lot of friends sometimes. I think people get really pissed. And it's a hard thing because just because it's out there doesn't mean that you're entitled to the answer. Right. Like, and I've learned mm -hmm. that the hard way too, where I get asked questions all the time. Just because it's there doesn't mean that I have to tell you. And, and it's not that I'm withholding it because I'm an asshole. I'm literally not telling you because I can't or because... I'll give it to you later or we'll talk about it later or DM me. It's like sometimes yeah. I'll get kind of slated on comments and never answer. Well, okay. I'm busy. Well, I got a job. I, yeah, I got a job. A. Yeah. And I want to answer, but I have to be respectful to the clients who just paid me to not answer, you know? Yeah. And it's a tough one. It's a tough one. So I try to just feed, like I try to, when I can share the information, I want to be able to do that, which is where all sorts of the new blog really comes into play because that's where we're going to share so much stuff in the, in the book. Yeah. yeah. So we're getting ready to come into Q&A, so y'all <laughs> get ready. But I do want to ask you one more question that I kind of want to end on. What do you want your legacy to be? Like, what's the impact that you kind of feel like you're on the path to make and want to achieve? Yeah. It used to be to be recognized for the creativity and to be recognized for being a killer interior designer. And it's shifting quite like in front of my eyes, it's all sort of shifting. I think having a daughter um, and watching, you know, her life evolve and everything else, I want to make sure that, especially because of my presence on social media, mm -hmm. that we're practicing being kind. One of the biggest things to me is making sure that, you know, any little bit I can do to spread love and kindness and the right energy out into the world, whatever that means, by showing people pretty things, by you know, whatever I can do. That's kind of what I hope to leave. Obviously the pretty things as well. Um, but I think as we get into this insane social media, digital world, get into it, we're in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, we have a big, res especially with a platform, I have a big responsibility to share kindness and being lovely and spreading joy. So I hope that's more what I get, you know. Yeah. Maybe along with the pretty stuff. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, so far, I think I think everybody approves of you, Harry. Okay, Seems good. like you're a pretty good human, okay, good. so okay, good. we're good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. far, so good. I'll let you know if that changes. All right. Okay, Can so we'll go... It? Yeah, from my, like, five yeah, yeah, minutes yeah. Up, up here with mm. you. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and open up the floor for any questions that y'all have if you want to come up to the mic so that we can make sure that we hear it. Yeah, the guy, the dude in the room. <laughs> woo! 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 <laughs> Uh, my question is around how an artist, when you started, how do you scale? Because you can't, somebody who hires you, you can't say, oh, here's my intern, here's somebody I work with, and I'm just going to have her sign up. Yeah. And it's like, if I am trying to buy Picasso, I don't want his apprentice to yeah. pay my painting. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? And then the second part is how do you scale from there and use that brand, brand creative? Yeah. The hardest part about a creative business is scaling. Uh, it's one of the things I struggle with the most because it is such a specific trade and it's such a specific aesthetic that it's not something that's taught overnight. It's something that you have to work with me for a year, two years, three years longer to be able to really absorb. At the end of the day, I'm really transparent at the get-go that I don't answer every single email. I converse with my team and I go through you know, the list of everything that needs to be answered, but I'm not going to personally write the checklist of what needs to be done. There's so many moving parts in a project um, that, you know, there's a lot of project management that has to happen without me directly involved on a daily basis. However, I still am pretty responsible for almost all of the design work. Uh, nothing goes to a client without passing my desk, which makes my life very busy for sure. But that's the only way that I can keep control of the aesthetic and what's going out into the world. But it is a very, very, very tough business to scale. It's actually impossible. If any of you Googlers have any uh, advice for me, let me know. <laughs> you guys seem to be doing OK, so let me know. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, Amber. Um, 
Hi. Um, oh, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> You're a real fan. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned that your style and your aesthetic is evolving. Yeah. Yeah, so to answer the first part, um, I think I, it, I ch it changes. Like, we just did, um, if you're following, which you're, clearly you know Kwana, so I'm assuming <laughs> that you follow on Instagram, we just did this, like, beautiful Spanish house that was very, like, moody and earthy and gorgeous and had this, like, elements of nods to Spanish, Moroccan. It was very cool. And then I just did a completely polar opposite of, like, major modern white vault, like, you know, black steel windows, that whole thing. I don't want to say what I think it's going to be because right now I don't think there's a plan. I think I just continue to do what I really like to do, which I think going really modern and that part of my creativity I still really love. And then the other kind of more moody, earthy, that whole thing I still love too. And then their second part was... What will the content of the book be? Oh. The content of the book will be, it comes out in fall 2020. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not that cruel. Um, we are talking about a lot of tips. So it's five or six chapters, I think. Six chapters. And five, I don't know. Anyway, don't quote me on it. Five or six. Five and a half. It's five and a half, yeah. It's very blurry time. Um, we're doing a whole like white paint roundup and how to get like the perfect white paint. We're doing shelf styling, how to's. Um, dark paint, texture, the whole like how to layer. I really am trying to cover as much as possible. So it's not just gonna be a pretty picture coffee table book. It, there's gonna be some anecdotal tidbits. Yeah, uh-huh. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, when you were first starting out, was there ever like a moment or something that happened um, that sort of made you wanna quit or let it go oh. and realize this wasn't meant to be. And if so, like, how did you persevere through that to become such a huge success? Yeah, you know, the hardest part is, is this, you got to have thick skin to have any business, I truly believe. Because one day you're an accountant, one day you're a receptionist, one day you're managing insane clients and construction and everything else, and the other day you're, you know, just trying to get by. So when I first started, and actually, let me just erase the idea that that isn't, that I still don't have those days like yesterday, like where it 100% you're just questioning, what am I doing? This is insane. This is too much. I got to stop. I got to chill out. Um, when I first, first started, it was really just people and team members that really kind of nailed me the hardest, uh, feeling like you're, you know, this is my like baby, this is my heart and soul, and you're giving so much to other people and realizing that that might not be a reciprocated feeling. Team was the hardest one. So like anytime I got burned by team members, that's been the biggest, the biggest one because you, that you, I mean, we're all human. And we analyze like, what did I do wrong? But yeah, so that's the, the biggest one. Yeah. Hi, uh, Hi. Uh, to uh, actually but to follow up on uh, what you actually said, which is healing. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a human emotion that just comes about with different activities that you have. Um, I aspired to be an entrepreneur from when I was in my seventh grade. Yeah. I come from a family of entrepreneurs, and uh, it, it's, it's a pleasure to meet people like you. Thank you. Uh, and learn from your stories, uh, you know, because many times I feel like uh, the story is that there was no plan, it just happened, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm in that phase where I don't know what's going to happen, but um, many times I find myself in a situation where I'm more the right brain, more creative, more, yeah. uh, um, more you know, less planned and structured and more creative. Uh, I want to learn from you or understand how you compartmentalize your thoughts, because feelings are most involved with certain activities. So right after that activity, sometimes it's it's harder to you know be fully involved with another task yeah. that is completely different because there are you know emotions that are just creeping in. in yeah. Right? So what do you do in that situation? It's a good. That's a really really good question. So when you've just given for my you know in my world when I've just given this crazy presentation and it's been like eight hours and we've been sitting in this 
conference room and we've gone like heart and soul. It's taken us like three weeks to get to that point or however many months and we're showing it. And then immediately I walk out of those conference room doors and I'm asked to like sign checks or whatever or like get on the phone with an attorney or whatever we're doing. It's draining. It's 100% draining and you kind of like the, the balloon deflates, right? I mean, you're already tired. Yeah. So I would say that you, it's, you either have it or you don't. And I know that that doesn't make sense or maybe sound fair, but you either have the ability to compartmentalize those things or you don't. And I think that I pride myself on being able to just, everything has a box. So funny enough, I was talking about this with my husband this morning. Everything has a box. So if I'm dealing with this, I know that I'm not going to, that euphoria of creativity and fun is not going to last that long because I just got to suck back into whatever else it is. So you take the good and the bad together. Uh, I say the bad, anything that's involving like invoicing or any accounting stuff I hate and I suck at. So I don't even try to pretend like I'm good, but it's part of the business. It's part of what we have to do. So I think you just acceptance, okay. acceptance to know that it's not always fun and you just have to, okay, shake it off and move into the next, whatever you're going to deal with that second. That's what I have Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do too. It's a learned behavior though. It is. I think, yeah. yeah. Just be insane and then you'll definitely get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hi. I'm here. Um, so just sort of piggybacking off of that. Yeah. Like, you mentioned uh, that you're a very ritualistic person, yeah, and that really kind of clicked with me. Uh, I I, read, uh, I don't know if you've read uh, Twelve Parks Creative Pro like Building the Creative Habit. No, but uh, I will. Do you yeah, get she's, that? She's in a okay. Yeah, she's she's in a Yeah, great read. Uh, but she talked a lot about rituals, and you mentioned that rituals are really important to you. Yeah. So I was hoping you could expand a little bit on some of the rituals that you partake in personally that feed you uh, creatively and that help kind of replenish you? Yeah. Uh, just yeah, as a creative person. I'm really sensitive to my environment. So when I find that things are kind of, it, it's, it's really crazy because like my closet will be a complete chaotic mess, but then like every other thing where, you know, my jewelry goes on the side table has to be a certain way or the way that things are on a shelf has to be a certain way, but then another aspect is crazy. My environment is extremely, extremely important to me. Um, so a lot of like natural light, a lot of going outside and getting some kind of earth, you know, you know, that's silly, like getting earthed where you put your feet on the ground and try to like ground yourself is kind of tried to do that and don't get to do it every day, but I try to. Um, and and again, like just being really respectful that those are my weird quirks. So anybody that's in and around my space, I just sort of let that out like hey guys I need natural light I can't handle dirty things on the ground you have to pick them up like there's certain parts of my personality that in order to be in a successful partnership with me or a successful like business relationship with me those are just standards that I put forward and I don't really feel bad about it anymore I used to be really embarrassed about like the things that drove me nuts and I wouldn't say it out loud, but then I realized it wasn't serving me. So silly things, uh, I, I can't even think, but like, I don't know, I'll think of something and I'll find you and tell you. But just this, like the little quirks, I just own them and just kind of say like, this is the, this is the only way that I can function today if this, this, and this is going on. Meditating is a really big one. Meditating. But my meditation is not like, mm. mine is coffee and the news on, by myself. And news, I mean, like scrolling on, on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, get off the blue light. No, I like the blue light. Oh let, me, <laughs> let me have my blue light. Damn it, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other questions? Perfect. Well, thank you so much for yes. coming. Oh my gosh, this it was, was awesome. so great. Thank I you guys. Feel thank so you. Good.